This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. Warning, vulgarity awaits. What's going on guys? This is Vinylic Puma and no more top fives. Top 20s now. And you know, actually I've got to admit, this is a bit of an experiment, so you're being tested, no pressure or anything. Anyway, top 20 best guns and weapons in Borderlands 2, go. Number 20. The Logan's Gun. You know, this is a piece of shit weapon, but when combined with the sham, you can regenerate rocket launcher ammo pretty quickly. So maybe this shouldn't be on the list, but I decided I'd include it anyway because it does have a useful purpose. Plus, it was the first legendary I ever got. Number 19. The Grog Nozzle. This is also another really important and useful utility weapon. This Moxie weapon has the highest percentage heal per damage dealt in the game, even though it comes with low base damage. The nice thing is that the healing is passive, so you can heal off things like your grenades that you throw or other weapons that you happen to be using or dual wielding. Number 18. The Heartbreaker. You may be heartbroken that this isn't the number one choice on the list. Yup, the Heartbreaker is a really nice, unique Moxie Hyperion shotgun that only comes in fire. This is a very effective weapon on most characters and is really nice on Krieg, provided you've built your character around his torch skill tree. Plus, this is a really good weapon in Borderlands the pre-sequel, so much that it has no designated drop. Number 17. The Droog Sniper Rifle. So this is a non-unique Vladov sniper, and it's been included here because it has very high DPS for a sniper rifle. The nice thing about the Droog is that it's very common in game, and when you're under level 30 or so, it's going to be one of the best sniper rifles that you can obtain early on, so go get one. Number 16, the Ravager. This is another non-unique weapon and is a Torg shotgun. Like the Droog, it can also be obtained in the game relatively early on and is vastly superior to other shotguns. Before the recent patch to splash damage, this particular weapon was stronger, but it has still retained most of its damage output. Number 15. The Conference Call very early on in Borderlands 2's lifespan, the conference call was considered to be the best shotgun in the game when paired with the B-Shield. While that has since been patched, the conference call is still a viable shotgun up against larger bosses like Terramorphus and Cromorax, specifically Son of Cromorax. This weapon can come in all elements and is a more economical option than the Hyperion Interfacer shotgun. Number 14. The Sword Splosion. Introduced in Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, this is the only Torg E-Tech shotgun, and instead of firing plasma balls or iridian energy, it shoots swords. The sword explosion is really effective with characters like Axton, as he can increase its damage through both gun, critical hit, and grenade damage. There's nothing like explosions to brighten your day. Number 13. The Hail. This weapon would have made it higher on the list, however you do need a field of view option to make it a little bit easier to use. The hail has passive healing like the grog nozzle, and can come in all elements and has a considerably higher critical hit damage modifier than normal for an assault rifle. The only real disadvantage of this weapon is that it fires in a high arc and can be difficult to fire accurately on console versions of the game. That said, the Xbox One versions and PS4 versions of Borderlands 2 have an FOV slider. Number 12, The Omen. This is one of the most powerful TDR shotguns in all of Borderlands 2. It's also much better than that other Seraph shotgun, the Retcher, that makes me want to vomit. The only real disadvantage to using this weapon is that it takes a while to get used to the firing pattern and um, gauging your optimal distance can be a bit of a problem. Number 11, the Becca. This is without a doubt the most powerful Jacobs assault rifle in the game and one of the few pearlescent weapons that doesn't suck. The Becca also benefits greatly when paired with the B shield as amp damage is applied to the first shot and the following unlisted projectiles. My only concern is that while it is very good, is it really worth farming for? I think I'll leave that decision up to you. However, I think this next one, we can agree, it's worth going for. Number 10, the Pimpernel. 
This is considered by some to be the single most powerful sniper rifle in all of Borderlands 2 and was introduced in the first expansion, Captain Scarlet's Pirate Booty. The secret to this weapon is once you obtain it, you just simply shoot everything in either the crotch or the knee. And at least no one on Pandora specifically says, I took an arrow to the knee. Man, thank God. Although they do say winter is coming. Number nine, the Baby Maker. This is my personal favorite TDR SMG, and while the Avenger TDR SMG is better, the Baby Maker is considerably easier to use. Upon throwing this weapon to reload, the initial gun explodes, spawning up to two baby versions, which also explode and deal a lot of damage. Unlike an E-Tech TDR SMG, which is more or less common than the Baby Maker, you can achieve the same amount of damage at lower ammo costs with the Baby Maker than you can the TDR E-Tech SMG. Number 8. The Bada Boom. Very high projectile count, high magazine, and low ammo consumption make this the perfect rocket launcher for when you're looking for a powerful but ammo efficient rocket launcher. Low level versions are quite useful for performing rocket jumps and allow you to get to places that you couldn't get to easily. Overall, the Bada Boom is a well-rounded weapon and definitely recommended for those that have the patience to farm for it. Number 7. The Sandhawk. This weapon is pretty much famous for its use with the bee shield. There's a good chance that you know about this weapon already, but in case you don't, the Sandhawk is a very powerful SMG and possibly the best SMG in the game. It fires multiple projectiles in a burst that are shaped like flying birds. It comes in all elements and even has a non-element version as well. Number six, the Lyuta slash White Death. This is one of, if not the highest DPS sniper rifles in Borderlands 2 and is ridiculously powerful. This weapon reaches new levels of insanity once you pair it with Zero's Critical Ascension skill, which allows for your critical hit damage to significantly increase for each critical hit you score. Get fucked, Pyro P. Number 5. The Lady Fist. The Lady Fist is a very powerful and very versatile weapon. It can be used on its own to achieve massive critical hit damage and also in conjunction with other weapons to passively increase the other weapon's critical hit damage. This latter effect is easily observed when dual wielding as Salvador the Gunzerker and is recommended for the offhand to improve critical hit damage of weapons like the Interfacer. Number 4. The Fastball. This is the most powerful grenade mod in the game and was buffed two years ago during the 100,000 loot hunt event. Before that buff, this was arguably one of the weakest legendary grenade mods in Borderlands 2. Honestly, I'd like to see more buffs like this one. If Gearbox decided to buff assault rifles in general, I think they would be more viable at Borderlands 2's endgame. Number 3. The Interfacer. This is one of the most powerful Hyperion shotguns in the game with an insane critical hit modifier. While this weapon is fairly decent for dealing damage to non-critical areas, it truly excels when dealing damage to enemies with either big or a lot of critical hit spots. It's difficult to get though, as you will need to beat Veracis to get one. Oh, that already sounds awful. Number 2. The Norfleet. This is the most powerful rocket launcher in the game. What it lacks in direct damage, it makes up for with its three E-Tech rockets of death and massive area of effect damage. It's hard to get, but shouldn't it be? After all, the Norfleet is easily one of the most powerful weapons in Borderlands 2. Number one, the Infinity. Oh, whoa, I'm sorry, I mean the Unkempt Herald. It's without a doubt that the Uncamped Herald is an excellent weapon. Impressive DPS, high damage, and up to 14 projectiles per shot, this weapon is lethal. Unlike the Interfacer, which takes skill to use, and the Norfleet, which deals most of its damage indirectly, the Uncamped Herald is easy to use and all damage is directly dealt, making it effective against everything from Psychos to Terramorphus and beyond. Anyway guys, that was going to pretty much wrap up this video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and take care, and I'll see you all next time.